Buonasera. The signorina and the signora want us some special destination? Just let's drift around. Uh, just someplace quiet, one of the small canals. Right there. Okay, Alicia, you said a song. Yes. Now listen carefully. All right. La 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 That's perfect. Now two of us know it. We'll be safer that way. Crane to see you. Come in, see you. Crane to see you. Come in, see you. This is Crane. If you read me, don't speak. Just flash. Acknowledged. I'm in contact with Alicia. Leonetti was right. They'll try anything to stop us. You're taping me, of course. Good. First, Dr. Leonetti is dead. They hauled his body out of the Grand Canal. The police called it suicide. But Alicia has the information. Those tapes Leonetti sent are the defenses against their so-called ultimate weapon. We play the tapes, that gibberish. Alicia has the key. It's a tune. Feed the notes of the tune through the computer, and the sonic impulses will decode the tape. And she taught me the melody, but she's going to hum it to yourself. Stand by to tape it. Okay, go ahead. This is the tune. La 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 to the bottom of the sea. Starring Richard Basehart. David Hedison. Voyage to the bottom of the sea.
more information on last night's brutal gondola murder. The victim, a beautiful young American tourist, was struck down by a blade with a poisoned tip. According to the statement of the gondolier, police believe her murderer was the same American who accompanied her aboard the gondola. should relay the following to the Office of Naval Intelligence. You ready? Dr. Leonetti is dead, but his tapes are aboard Seaview. Now, these tapes represent our defense against the new weapon system developed by the other side. The key to the tapes is a tune. Excuse me, sir. You said tune? That's right, a melody. Now, Captain Crane knows the melody, but he's trapped in Venice and framed with a murder charge, so I'm leaving for Venice immediately. Yes, sir. Oh, one other thing. Request ONI to send me the identity of the top enemy agent in North Italy. Right away, sir. Oh, Admiral, can you get Lee... Can you get Captain Crane out of there? I don't know. I wish I did. <laughs> Lee may be dead for all we know, but I'm gambling that he's not. That's why I'm going into Venice openly. You'll be recognized in no time flat. Well, the sooner the better. If I can't find Crane, then he has to find me. Are you going alone, sir? No, I need uh, two men. Is there anybody on board that can write music? Uh, Stu Riley can. I might have known. Well, if you can call that music, it's that surfer stuff. Quality doesn't matter, just as long as you can write the notes down. Alert him, and uh, I'll need someone to take us in on the flying sub. Chief Sharky can handle that. I'll see you at once. Admiral. Yes? Miss Hale calling from the Institute. Coming. Unscramble. Got anything, Miss Hale? Yes, sir. A report from ONI. They have information on an enemy agent who's supposed to be making his headquarters right in Venice somewhere. Oh, who is he? His cover name is Count Staglioni, but the jet set types call him Ferdy. Ferdy? That doesn't sound very imposing, does it? Don't be fooled, sir. ONI says he's dangerous. You are to use extreme caution. Repeat, extreme.
Venice. The only great city in the world that can be completely cut off from the outside. He's trapped, framed and trapped, holed up in there. But where? A hundred canals, a thousand alleyways. We'll land in the Adriatic, beyond the islands. Commence a merge. Antonio, I never cease to be staggered by your prices. We try to please. Admiral Nelson approaches along the Via Margarita. He's about to enter the square. And Giulietta? With him. Molto bene. Sector 2 search completed. Results negative. Sector 4, investigating report of a tall man who may be American was seen lurking in the district late last night. We'll report again on this in transmission. How about sitting over here? Andy, my dear, what a surprise. And for me too, cara Giulietta. Oh, I have a better surprise for you. This is a very famous American gentleman, Admiral Harriman Nelson, my friend Count Staglione. My dear Admiral, I am honored. Please sit down, join me. Mm -hmm. I really have much time. I insist, come, join me. Antonio. I had no idea Venice is such a distinguished visitor. You are here long? Just a brief holiday. I plan to see the sights and uh, relax a bit. He wanted to go to the casino, and here we meet you. Ah, but you must not waste an evening at the old casino. Ferdi runs the new casino. It's much smart. All the really important people pay there now. You must visit it before you leave, Amiral. Oh, Negroni, per favore. Bourbon and soda. Negroni, bourbon and soda. This will admit you to the Salpre Day at the casino. So much more intimate. Thank you. You're enjoying Venice. Well, let's say I find it stimulating. I can imagine. Undoubtedly, your friends here. But it's sometimes rather difficult to know just who your friends are. <laughs> How true. But I find the natives friendly. <laughs> so I see. Now, Ferdy, you must not monopolize the Admiral because we were getting on so well. Ah, yes. You must not permit me to spoil your fun. <laughs> but do try to visit my casino, will you, Admiral? Yes, you must. And I will be there tonight. Well, in that case, I'll make a point of it. Good. Very nice to meet you. Thank you. Arrivederci, Amira. Ciao, Juliet. Ciao.
police believe the young man was struck by at least one of their bullets and may be forced to seek medical attention. The fugitive would appear to be doomed, since Venice is the only major city which can be sealed off from the outside world. With a single bridge to the mainland guarded, with all boat operators warned, capture of the unidentified American is seemingly a matter of hours. got a panic going, sir. It seems some joker knocked one of their men in the canal. Where? The same landing where the murder gondola was stashed. Well, it has to be Crane. They didn't catch him. No, sir, not even close. The skipper's really got him bugged. Well, all the reports seem to be coming from the Piazza San Marco area. That's the place where I met the Count. Well, that was one break anyway. You get picked up by a beautiful girl, and she happens to know this count. Breaks had nothing to do with it. The lovely young lady in question was on the prowl looking for me. So I let her find me and take me to the count. It's always safer to let the mouse think he's running the show. Well, I hope you did the right thing, Admiral, because this count character doesn't sound like anybody you can be playing around with. He's no more dangerous than a cornered cobra, Chief. <laughs> blade just like this one. Who ordered you to kill her? Chalk, so help me, I'll snap it off. Where's Captain Crane? Talk! He's up on him, Chief. Crane's alive, I'm sure of that now, but somebody's afraid I'll get to him first. That's why you came here to kill me, isn't it? Don't cop out on us, buster answer. Never mind, Chief, let him go. Let him go. Let him go. You get out of here before I kill you. Come on. He should have should let us clobber him, Admiral. Tell him, Chief. Report to me the minute he contacts somebody. Anybody. Aye, aye, sir. <laughs> Fourteen report sector five clear, moving to sector six. Oh, yes, uh, a specific pattern emerges. We are closing in on our American friend. His hours are very definitely numbered.
Admiral? Come in, Ed. Over. Come in, Ed. Over. Our friend went straight to a gambling casino on Via Margarita. Is he there now? Negative. He stayed for about 20 minutes. Then came out and crossed St. Mark's place. What do I do now? You come back here and stay with Riley. I'm going to the casino as soon as it opens. Casino, sir? That's right. I'm going to do a little gambling. <laughs> There's nobody else I can turn to. There's nothing I can do to help you, You're senora. being paid by American intelligence, aren't you? As a drop, not as an agent. I'm a simple shopkeeper. Is it a question of money? Well, everything is a question of money, senora. All right. I'll see that you're paid double. Huh. Now, Admiral Nelson is supposed to be in Venice. I must reach him. Double, senora. Remember yes. that. Yes, double. Go on. Admiral Nelson is at the Hotel Dandolo. Dandolo? Where's your phone? No, 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 no phone. The wire will be tapped. Where's your phone? There. Oh, uh, the number is Mar. M-A-R. Six, two, nine, four. Oh, be prepared to hang up quickly, huh? Yes, I see. Yes. Uh, keep it talking as long as you can. I will have a trace it. An American calling Nelson of the Dandel. Stand by, I'm going to need you. Pronto? Pronto? Uh, are they ringing him? I think so. It's, it's taking a long time. Well, it's an old trick. They stole. They keep you on the line while they trace the call. Uh, listen, Bellini, I, uh, I need somebody to, uh, to write music notes, and I need them now. Well, I, I know of no one who can be trusted. For triple the money. To write music, no. To play music, yes. Will that help? All right. How long uh, will it uh, take you to get them here? Oh, not very long. Good. You see, I... Uh, Les 27, rouge, un peu les passes. 
Go see with My stars, are all those mine? Yeah. It's that Dolce Vita, Miss Harmon. A nice story to tell when you get back home. Mesdames et messieurs, faites vos jeux. Faites vos jeux. Faites vos jeux, mesdames et messieurs. Rien ne va plus. Rien ne va plus. Amira Nelson, good evening. Delighted to come to my casino. I was under the impression that I had a uh, date. Juliette, uh, she hasn't arrived. Something important on that will be detained. No matter, enjoy yourself at the table. For you, there is no limit. Le 36, rouge, père et passe. Merci, monsieur. Congratulations. You have been extraordinarily lucky, Amiro, so far. Mesdames et messieurs, faites vos jeux. Faites vos jeux, monsieur, mesdames et messieurs. Mesdames et messieurs. You know what to do. Signore, he has no English, but I explained everything to him. He will do a very fine job. Oh, I wish I didn't have to depend on him. But they're watching every move the Admiral makes. I can't get anywhere near him. I've got to trust you, Bellini. Oh, Signor, I've given you shelter. I find you a fine musician. <laughs> you can trust me with your life for triple pay. Bye, <laughs> uh, bye. Come each other, so I... Buonasera, signorina. Buonasera. Unless you scream. Now, if I take my hand away, will you keep quiet? All right, I warned you. Uh, what do you want? I'm in trouble. I need your help. I'm American. You're the one the police are looking for. Yes. You're a murderer. No, but I'm having a little trouble making anyone believe that. I saw you leaving with Admiral Nelson tonight. You know him? He's, he's my boss. My name's Crane. Commander Lee Crane of the submarine save you. I don't believe you. Why didn't you speak to the Admiral? He's being watched at every second. I've got to reach him, and that's how you can help me. Will you? I, I don't know. 
How, how can I believe you? Now listen, I've got no no right to ask this of you, but but I I I'm desperate, and there's no other way. Now, are, are you willing to take a risk? And believe me, it's a real risk to do something that's vitally important to your country. Oh, you're making fun of me. Do I look like I'm making jokes? No. All right. Will you help me? What do you want me to do? All right. Just memorize a little tune. I want you to go to Admiral Nelson and sing it to him. I can't. You mean you won't? I can't. I, I'm tone deaf. Oh. All right. And now, we'll have to do it the hard way. Now, I hope you've got a good memory. You're going to need it. I'll get this straight. Admiral Nelson. Well, you remember me, don't you? Oh, yeah, yes, the uh, school teacher from Ohio, uh, Miss, uh, Miss Harmon. Betty Harmon. I can't tell you how I enjoyed the gambling last night. Do you gamble often, Admiral? More than I should, I'm afraid. <laughs> Please, won't you, won't you sit down? Thank you. You know, being a tourist is hard work. I've been sightseeing all day. The signorina wishes to order? Oh, uh, yes, I am thirsty. Would it be possible to get some kind of a soft drink? Uh, limonata. Si, senor. I, I even went shopping. Let me show you. The, uh, I thought it was a stork, but the shopkeeper assured me it was a genuine crane. Go on. Well, I, I was fascinated. The crane was damaged a little, the, the left wing, but nothing serious. I couldn't resist it. Its expression is so, so... Desperate, don't you think? Where could I find a crane like this? Well, it's the cutest little place called Bellini's. And the address is 64 Calle del Lombardo. When are they open? Uh, well, that's the funniest part. Ordinarily, not during the day. It was just an accident that I found it. I'm told the best time to go is after dark. Say, oh, around 11 p.m. Will they be open tonight? Yes, definitely tonight. Well, I thought you'd be interested. I am, believe me. Una limonata. Oh, thank you. Oh, I, I don't think I'm thirsty after all. I still have so many other things to see, and time has a way of racing by. It certainly does. Well, it's been nice talking to you, Miss Harmon, and uh, I hope you enjoyed the rest of your visit here. Thank you. Oh, I suppose in Venice I should say grazie. No, I'm the one who should say grazie. Commander Morton. Chip, we've made contact with Lee. Now we have to get him out of Venice. So Chief Sharkey is picking him up at exactly 2,300 hours, and we'll bring him to the Seaview in the flying sub. What about you, Admiral? Will you be aboard with him? Negative. They're watching every move I make. I'm the uh, decoy in this operation. All right, sir. We'll be expecting a Chief and Lee shortly after 2,300 hours. Very well, end transmission.
Sit down, Riley. You picking up anything from the casino on your monitor? No, sir. Just a couple of cleaning women early this morning. Nothing else. Hope you didn't go all that sweat last night for nothing. I mean, planting that bug in there. Maybe the casino isn't their headquarters. I still think it is. You keep monitoring. <sighs> yes, sir. Uh, just one thing, Admiral. This uh, little bird that gave you the message from the skipper. Uh, can you trust her? Betty Harmon? With my life. No, no, no. I don't know what you're talking about. I regret your choosing to make it difficult for us and, and for yourself. No matter. <laughs> my friend here has a syringe filled with a rather exotic chemical known as amine trioxidase. You will soon tell us anything we want to know. No, no. Can we get her out? Not a chance, not yet. This needs a complete change of plans. I'll contact Seabue with new orders. Meanwhile, I want you to go to this address. Captain Crane is there. Get him aboard the flying sub and back to the Seabue. Now, they're expecting me to go for them, so if you move fast, you should get away with it. Aye, aye, sir. Take off. Well, Chief? It's up to us to dream up some way of keeping our friends here occupied. Stay here until 11 o'clock? Oh, no, no. I, I don't know. But it's less than three hours. I can't dodge around the streets any longer. I realize, but what if you've already been spotted? Uh, perhaps followed. If they'd spotted me, I wouldn't be here. I'd be dead. All right. You may stay. But... <laughs> Captain Crane, we have been looking all over Venice for you. Special equipment. Oh, stashed away in every pocket. We just got time to get to the casino before it opens. Uh, are you sure you know how to do the rigging? Gimmick a wheel? Admiral, I had a very rich and full childhood. Good. If we're going to have to rely on surprise and confusion if we hope to get that girl out of her alive. Uh, have you got everything? Y yes. All right, let's go. <laughs> Zero. That'll make the connection. And that'll trigger the smoke bomb. In the confusion, we can free the school teacher. How much longer? All set. 
All right, let's get out of here. Good evening, gentlemen. I'm flattered to find you're going to wait until the casino opens. I assume that we're your prisoners. You are. I, I won't try anything if I were you. I have ample manpower. All well armed. What do you hope to accomplish by holding us? After all, you're a professional agent. You should know when you're beaten. Beaten, Amiro? And how do you arrive at the conclusion? Crane was the man you had to stop, not me. By now, he's aboard the sea view and out of your reach. Really? Julieta? No, no, Amiro. Check me. Too badly hurt, Lee? I was winged. And my ego is a little bit bruised, but that's all. We clobbered him, Admiral. Then we ran outside into a whole flock of them and... <sighs> wipe out. And may I compliment you and your men on your resourcefulness. On happy, it has gained you nothing. The little tune that is so important to all of us is still locked in the good captain's head. Am I right? No, perhaps you are, but uh, that doesn't do either one of us any good. I doubt if Captain Crane is in the mood to sing. Uh, perhaps not. But the tune will be of great importance to us, you know. Or were you aware that we do possess a copy of the lamented Ottolionetti's cryptic tape? That's why we prefer to capture the good captain. We are most anxious to decode the tape ourselves. I'm afraid you can't. Not without the tune. Mm, Captain Cranes will sing, just as your young lady did, with the aid of a little shot of uh, amine trioxidase. Oh, wait, wait a minute, sir. I suppose it's a foregone conclusion that none of us will get out of here alive. Uh, it's a fair statement. I regret it must include the school teacher, poor little thing. <laughs> but she knows far too much now. You understand, don't you? Perfectly. Since we're all condemned to die, I'd like to make one last request. All right. Well, as a, as a gambling man, you must be familiar with the old superstition that a condemned man invariably has luck in gambling. Well, do you feel lucky? <laughs> Hardly, but uh, I'd like to try one turn at the wheel. You have nothing to lose, I have nothing to gain. But we might test the superstition. And why should I agree? Because you have an inquisitive mind. Because you're a gambler. Are you tempted? One play. That's all. That's all. It could be amusing. Very well, Amiro. Fait for you. My number is zero. Congratulations, Admiral. 
Is Lee all right? He's fine, Miss Hale. See for yourself. Hi, Lola. Are you in the mood to listen to a little music? What happened to your arm? A music critic? A little respect for the artist, please. Get your tapes ready, Lola. This is the tune that caused all the trouble. La, 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 la. La, 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 la. La, 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 This is your target. Conditions are ideal. Low local overcast and a wind drift of less than one knot. Are you ready? We are approaching position. Jump in 15 seconds. Mark. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Cabrillo, sir. I'm an agent for the Office of Naval Intelligence. Identification? I'm working in black. Nothing on me. Sorry, Cabrillo. I don't know you. A man is known by the company he keeps. State your company. I work alone. Uh, come on in. Noah, I've been tailed all day. I've got to keep moving. Just one thing. Penfield must be stopped. What? George W. Penfield. He must not become Secretary of Defense. <laughs> You're out of your mind. Someone will show up at your office tomorrow with a match folder exactly like this. Your secretary is to let that person in to see you at once. Why didn't the ONI contact me directly? I'm sure they will. When I've contacted them, I've got to go. Good night, Admiral. Down to launch. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. 
launch. surface, travel as far as we like submerged, and then go into the sky at supersonic speed. Now tell me, what do you think of it? Well, to say I'm impressed is an understatement. No, thanks, sir. I'd like to know something. What? How come the captain's got that guy up there with him? Mr. Penfield? Yeah, yeah, him. I thought this thing was supposed to be hush-hush. We never took a civilian up there before. Well, that's not just another civilian chief. That's George W. Penfield, one of the most important men in this country. Oh, yeah, sure, that Penfield. The president just nominated him to be our next secretary of defense. He's got as much right as anybody up there. Oh, sure, sure. <laughs> that's, that's right. That's, it just slipped my mind. That's Mr. Morton. <clears throat> Signal from the skipper. He's going to change a flight plan. He'll be aloft in another 30 minutes. In that case, change course, minus 10 degrees. Uh, Kowalski? Come here. You know who that guy is up there with the skipper? Sure. Some guy named Penfield. Why? Some guy named... That's George W. Penfield, the most important man in this country. Look, kid, don't you ever read the papers? <laughs> Help yourself. Hi. And what can I do for you? I would like to see Admiral Nelson. Oh, I'm sorry. All appointments for today have been canceled. It's OK. I haven't got one anyhow. Matt? Say your name is Penfield. Tippy Penfield. 
And you're right. Same Penfield. I'm his daughter. I admire your father, Miss Penfield. Most people do. Rise through the president, world famous humanitarian. He's quite a man. But I didn't come here to discuss that. Mm. Well, why did you come here? Because I need you. Because I believe you're a man who would do anything to protect his country. Thank you. And just what am um, I expected to do to protect it? Prevent my father from becoming Secretary of Defense. <laughs> That's ridiculous. I bet you got a barrel of chuckles last night when that man was killed practically under your nose. What do you know about that? Isn't that match folder I brought exactly like the one he gave you? I sent him to you last night because I thought you'd listen to a man like that. I guess I was wrong. Now, wait a minute. What you ask is impossible. Is it? Suppose you convince me. What I do, pick up the phone and tell the president he's picked the wrong man? Of course not. But the Senate has to confirm the appointment. The hearings are going on right now. Ask to testify. They'll listen to you. Testify to what? I hardly know your father. What I do know is good. Frankly, I think the president made an excellent choice. If you had documentary evidence that the appointment of my father could be dangerous, even ruinous to the security of this country, what would you do? I would go to the Senate, even if I had to ram it down the committee chairman's throat. I think you mean that. Will you come to Los Angeles with me, right now? But why Los Angeles? To a little place downtown called the White Globe Travel Agency. Oh, that's where the evidence is. Enough to satisfy anyone. Father. Do you know the man with him? That wouldn't be Noah Grafton. That's right. We're invited down to his place for the weekend. Brought along my home movie camera without telling anyone. I took this from the balcony outside my bedroom. Do you recognize the other man? It's the man we surprised in the travel agency. You want to kill both Cabrillo and the travel agent. He got a good look at you there. You're in danger yourself now. I'll assign a guard. No, they wouldn't dare do anything to me. But there's more.
Noah Grafton. One of the richest and most hated men in the country. Why not? He's never made a secret of his sympathy for the cause of the Iron Curtain countries. What's your father doing with that man? Now do you begin to understand? I don't believe it. Penfield and Grafton. There was, there was never any hint of this. You saw them eyeing you, sub. How would you like for my father to become Secretary of Defense now? With access to every military secret we own? So the next time the boom came around and almost swept me into the bay, I turned to the Secretary of the State and I said, uh, Henry, if you handle a ship of state the way you handle this sloop, I'm switching parties now. <laughs> <laughs> Problems, Captain? Nothing serious, Mr. Penfield. Would you excuse me a minute? Now, you go right ahead, Captain. I just hope you can steer better than the Secretary of State. <laughs> <laughs> and I recall another time I was uh, sailing out Chesapeake Bay and... Um... Oh, Kowalski. Are you sure the Admiral said to take it in his cabin? Yes, sir. Your personal code. For the years of the Captain only. Very well. Carry on. Here's the 8x10 steel you ordered from the movie. And Captain Crane is ready on the video phone. Oh, thank you, Angie. Yes, Admiral. Lee, I want you to find some excuse to keep Penfield out of the flying sub. He's already been up. He was practically Popeye'd at the performance. <sighs> I can imagine. Well, where is he now? In the nose with the officers. He's quite a Joe, Admiral. He's spoken to everybody aboard. The men think he's great. And you, Lee? Well, it's the first time I've met him, but uh, he's what I expected, a fine gentleman. Why? What time do you get into Santa Barbara? ETA is 16.30 hours. Lee, this is serious. I leave it to your discretion. Make certain that Penfield sees no top security equipment aboard Seaview. May I ask why, Admiral? I'll tell you when I can. I want you to maintain radio silence, no matter who Penfield might want to call. Is that clear? Yes, sir, clear. Very well. End transmission. This is your reply from the Director, Office of Naval Intelligence, and has been decoded. Oh, read it, Andrew. Confirm, late Joseph Cabrillo, accredited agent on top priority security clearance and counter-espionage. Exact nature of current assignment undetermined as yet. We'll advise further. Uh, take this down, Angie. Urgent telegram to the senior senator from Idaho. Respectfully request I be permitted to testify before your committee at tomorrow's afternoon session. Ray, the confirmation of the appointment of George W. Penfield as Secretary of Defense. I have reason to believe that his confirmation would be detrimental to the security of our country. Oh, is that all, sir? <laughs> Isn't that enough? In two hours, I have the press of the world on my head. Oh, these, uh, put these in the wall safe for me. Yes, sir. And be careful, that needle is a deadly poison. time the retired admiral, head of the Nelson Institute of Marine Research, has ever taken a political stand. Cut it off. Chip, has Penfield heard any of this? Not a word. You ordered me to tell him our communications were out. So that's why the admiral wanted him kept in the dark. What's got into him? Darned if I know. Well, we'll find out soon enough. What's our position? We're on course for Santa Barbara, standard speed. Bring her up to full. All right. Angie, does the name Noah Grafton mean anything to you? Noah Grafton? You mean that crackpot millionaire we read about in the papers all the time? Well, he's a millionaire, all right, many times over, but I, I wonder how much of a crackpot he is. Well, he's always visiting behind the Iron Curtain, making fun of our system and things like that, isn't he? That he is, Angie. But nobody's ever figured out how much is a pose and how much is conviction. Now, that is an interesting question. 
I know one thing, sir. He'll never win any popularity contests. Well, what concerns me right now is why should a man of Penfield's supposed integrity be friendly with a man like Grafton? Well, uh, maybe they grew up together. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Uh, Grafton has an estate someplace in eastern New Mexico. Find out where it is, get him on the phone. I think it's time we met. Yes, sir. a most informative voyage, Captain. I want to thank you personally. Thank you, sir. I'm sorry about the news that greeted you when we touched port. And Admiral Nelson. <laughs> well, son, if you don't have the height of a rhinoceros, you don't belong in politics. The Admiral's a rational man. I'm sure he has his own motives. Yes, sir. Mr. Morton will see you ashore. That's very nice. Thank you. See that he's not bothered by reporters. Yes, sir. Right this way, Mr. Penfield. All right, Angie, put him through to me. Admiral Nelson, how do you do, sir? Good evening, Mr. Grafton. To what do I owe this unexpected call, sir? I wonder if you've heard of my planned testimony against the appointment of George Penfield. Of course. All the wire services have the story. You are a courageous man, Admiral. Penfield is quite an adversary. Then you know him. By reputation, sir, by reputation. And you admire him? Well, I'm a poor one to ask. My criticism of our country's so-called statesman has left me a target for every self-respecting patriot. Uh, let's just say uh, that I think Penfield is a man of his word, uh, and we need such men at the helm these days. Then you think I'm making a mistake? Indeed I do. One that you will live to regret, I'm afraid. Unless, of course, you change your mind. I don't intend to do that. No, I, I, I didn't think you would. <laughs> well, this has been a most pleasant conversation, Admiral. Oh, just one thing more, Mr. Grafton. Have you ever actually met Penfield? I have never met him face to face, no. Uh, is that all, sir? Yes, yes, that's all. <laughs> near the main building. He's armed and dangerous. Find him.
Understand where did it come from? Well, that was meant for Angie, but undoubtedly there's another one with my name on it. Now, let me get this straight. First, you warned me to keep Penfield from seeing too much. Next, the public announcement opposing his appointment. And now this. They're all connected, of course. If somebody wants to stop my testimony, and they're perfectly willing to kill me if they have to. And you're still going to go through with it? I'm leaving for Washington in the morning. Do you have enough evidence to convince the Senate? I have enough to convince myself. Because if you face that Senate committee with this and you lose, it could mean the end of your career. You think I don't know that? Admiral, a Mr. Lasher for you on four. Lasher? He's calling through the White House switchboard. Oh, that's Fred Lasher, one of the presidential assistants. Uh, put him on, Andrew. Well, you better stay here. I want you to hear this. Good evening, Admiral. Good evening, Fred. It's nice to see you again. You're working late, aren't you? You can guess why. Any change in your plans? I'm afraid not, Fred. I wish you'd give it some thought. The boss feels pretty strongly about it, you know, and the people are behind him. They're getting flooded with telegrams here. All pro Penfield. And, um, uh, anti Nelson? Well, frankly, yes. Now, what do you say? I'll see you in Washington tomorrow morning. Have it your way, Admiral. At least I tried. Goodbye. Leo, the CVQ on the bed. Oh, but the standby watch, why? 
Well, I'm spending the night in my cabin aboard Seaview. I want maximum security maintained. I'll see to it. Security on that prowler? No, sir. They're still searching. Well, I don't see any reason why you can't go home. It's been quite a day, hasn't it? And it's not over yet. Hi. You can still go, Angie. Thank you, sir. Well, what about my reservations to Washington? They're confirmed and waiting for you at L.A. International. Good night. Complaining, mind you, but uh, what was that for? For following through. Oh, the testimony. I know what courage it took. <laughs> Thank you. But why did you come back here? I had to. You can do me just one more little favor. Well? Call it off. The trip? The testimony, everything. Well, it's a little late for that. No, it isn't. Issue a statement, say you were misquoted, say anything, but don't go. <laughs> Miss Penfield, you, you continue to amaze me. Now, why have you changed your mind? Because I'm afraid of what might happen to you. And to you? All right, I'm afraid for myself, too. Look, I offered you a guard and you refused it. Now, obviously, you know as well as I do that your father is not going to let you come to any harm. I can't even reach my father. Took a terrible chance in giving you that evidence. I thought I was pretty brave, but I'm not. When the chips are down, I want to stay alive. Well, we all want to do that. Look, if, uh, if you're in any danger because of my testimony, I can arrange for you to stay here under guard. I didn't even come here of my own accord. I came here under orders. Whose orders? Oh, I told you too much already. All I was supposed to do was make you change your mind. Oh, I guess I'm pretty much of a flop as a temptress. No, no, I would say that you are remarkably successful. But nothing can change my mind now. All right, Admiral. Just stay alive. Stay alive. We have special security details guarding all approaches to the dock. There's also a guard in the control room. Now, your men will patrol the corridors adjoining the Admiral's cabin. Are there any questions? What gives, Skipper? We're expecting company. The Admiral has good reason to believe that an attempt will be made on his life before morning. Now, if such an attempt is made, we want a prisoner. Don't take any chances, but get one. All right, carry on. All right, men. Let's get to our posts. Mm.
company you were expecting, sir. Busy evening plan, didn't you? Take him to security headquarters for questioning. Sorry to upset your plans. When I fly to Washington in the morning, I'm taking you with me. You'll make a pretty convincing exhibit. It's a good thing the airline let us use a private exit. I'll phone you as soon as the testimony's over. Fine. Good luck. Thank you. Must keep your seat belts fastened until we reach altitude. I give up. Now, what's your angle this time? I guess you're thoroughly disgusted with me by now. That would be one way of putting it. Obviously, this is not a commercial plane. It's a privately owned jet. Belongs to Noah Grafton. I had to do this. Please understand. And don't worry. I managed to get word to my father. He'll see that nothing happens to you. And needless to say, our destination is not Washington, D.C. I can't tell you anymore now. Well, let me guess. We're bound for a private estate in eastern New Mexico. I've got to do this. Please understand. Well, Admiral, I'll have to go serve lunch now. After all, you're traveling first class. They told me at the gate you were trying to find me. Oh, Lee, the Admiral is in danger. What is it? Well, the airline called to say that he never boarded the flight. Well, that's impossible. I put them on that plane myself. We were ducking reporters and we went to a rear exit and then I... Wait a minute. Anybody could have been driving that courtesy cart. I checked with the terminal and he didn't board the plane and nobody saw him after the flight left. With all those reporters, somebody would have noticed him. That's right. Unless he took another flight, not a scheduled airline. Angie, get me a list of all special flights departing L.A. International Airport this morning, all right? Yes, sir. Well, 
Well, we weren't very hungry, were we? Does the condemned man have to eat the... Uh... Oh, come now, don't talk like that. Fasten your seatbelt, please. We're entering our glide pattern. Here, I'll take that. Welcome to New Mexico. Land of enchantment. I'm glad I caught you, Chip. Now listen, I want you and two men from the duty watch. Issue them equipment and stand by at the flying sub until I get there. I don't know where we're going, but I do know we've got to get there fast. Now get on it. Here's the full list of special flights, and only one of them means anything. It's flight 144. Uh, Noah Grafton, of course. Do you have any idea where he lives? Well, the Admiral called him yesterday. It's in New Mexico, and here's the mm. address. Welcome to Grafton Hall, Admiral Nelson. Uh, look, Lee, I'm not exactly the nosy type, but you never did brief us before we took off. We don't even know where we're headed. There wasn't time. I'll tell you what I can, but it isn't much more than what you already know. Which is nothing. We're heading for New Mexico, the private estate of a man named Grafton. I have every reason to believe the Admiral is being held there. At least I hope so. And if he isn't? Then he's dead. It's ridiculously simple. Do as I ask, or you are a dead man. Grafton, you're bluffing. I'll tell you why. He isn't. He is the one who gave me the orders. He would have killed me just as he'll kill you. Be quiet. I can't abide chattering women. Finish your thoughts, sir. But to borrow your own phrase, it's ridiculously simple. The whole world expects me to testify in Washington today. Now, if anything happens to me, there will be an immediate investigation. And it won't be hard to trace me here. Well thought out. Of course, you're not in possession of all the facts, as yet. Daddy, thank heaven you got here. Noah, I'd like a word with you in private. I won't dare hurt these men. <laughs> That's very amusing. It'd be interesting to know which one of you really gives the orders. Is there any question in your mind? Admiral, the man you see before you is nothing. Oh, a handsome figure of man, I grant you. That's why I chose him. No, not chose him. Created him. George W. Penfield is a product of my own genius. I picked him out. A man who was the very essence of mediocrity. I trained him, promoted him, until the world accepted him as a leader. It's a delicious irony. I'm the most despised man in this country, and I control its best-loved citizens. Why? Well, he's been useful in furthering the things I believe in. He'll be far more useful in the immediate future, though I very much doubt if you will be around to see it. <laughs> Strip off to the right. Forget it. We're setting down as close to the house as we can without being seen. When you're not invited, it doesn't pay to advertise. Now, once we land, here's how we're going to work it. Penfield believed, rather pathetically, that I could persuade you not to testify against him in exchange for your life. <laughs> Naturally, I never believed that you would. I've already told you why you can't risk killing me. You do me little credit. <laughs> you will die in a most plausible way. 
You accepted a ride to Washington in my private jet. Let's say that en route there was a crash in the mountains. No survivors. I need hardly add the jet will be equipped with the drone pilot. You're a clever man. You're thinking that if you are sent aloft alone in an automatic jet, you will improvise a way out of your difficulties. Unhappily, however, when I send you aloft, you will already be quite dead. Undoubtedly, he's here to save you. Check outside, see if he brought any friends with him. Don't bother, I'm alone. How did you get here? The airstrip's fully guarded. You might say I... I just dropped in. It's a shame, Grafton. It'll mean more work for him. Don't worry. He loves his work. <laughs> Penfield certainly doesn't rate all the attention he's getting. <laughs> That's one nice touch. Grafton's death is back around page three, crowded off the front page by the man he created. Mm -hmm. 